Welcome to our latest video about the Canon VR 180 stereoscopic lens. My name is Daniel Pohl, I'm the CEO of Immer VR in Germany. And in today's video, we're gonna look very closely at the brand new Canon 5.2mm stereoscopic VR 180 lens. And specifically, we'll compare it to other virtual reality consumer cameras and what the impact is. What does it mean if you have these kinds of pictures versus other cameras in your virtual reality headset? And to get started, we first do a little bit of unboxing. So I got this nice package here today and let's see what's in it. The Canon RF 5.2 millimeter f2.8 L. It's the VR 180 stereoscopic fisheye lens. Fisheye stereo VR 180 degrees. Huge lenses will cover massive field of view, all up, all down, all left, all right. So you have a great half sphere of your environment with this lens. As you can already see, the size of the Canon with the attached lens is of course much larger than the other consumer cameras, which are much smaller and were available before. But in terms of weight, how much weight do you have to carry around? So with the Insta360 Evo, we have about 130 grams with the Lenovo Mirage camera. It is around 150 grams. The Wuse XR weighs around 220 grams. And now camera body lens attached and the strap also so it doesn't fall down. It's about 1100 grams. So clearly it's much heavier, so that means also if you mount it on a tripod, you might want to use a more robust tripod which can cover the weight. And if you offset the camera so you don't have the legs on the tripod on it, you might want to have a large stable rail and maybe even some counterweight. Now let's also talk about the image resolution you get from these cameras. The Canon ESR5 attached with a regular lens, shooting pictures in aspect ratio of 3 by 2 gives you pictures with 45 megapixels. However, this is not a regular lens. This dual fisheye setup, um, the light that's coming in and going to your image sensor will not cover the full sensor. Therefore, the image you will get after rendering also will be around 34 megapixels. So what does it mean 34 megapixels? Let's take a look at the other cameras. So the other VR consumer cameras like the Lenovo Mirage, for example, like the Wuzi XR, like the Insta360 Evo, they all give you images with an output resolution of 18 megapixels. So roughly meaning this Canon with this lens gives you roughly twice as much detail in pixels. Let's also talk about the price point of these cameras. For the body, Canon EOS R5 with a cashback, you had to pay around 4,000 euros in Germany, including taxes. Additionally, you need to purchase the lens, which is currently around 2,200 euros. In comparison to that, the VR cameras we mentioned earlier, for example, the Lenovo Mirage camera, this was initially sold at around 300 euros, later even discounted at 200 euros, and there are still used models around, which are roughly between 200 and 300 euros. The same pretty much goes for the other cameras we mentioned, the Insta Evo um, or the Wuse. They are around 300 to 500 euros in the original price. Some of them are unfortunately not available anymore today. So this lens actually needs manual focusing, there's no autofocus. You can change that on the ring here. And what you can do, for example, if you look on the web for camera test patterns, like the one you see here below, you can print these out, do that at your highest DPI um, resolution of the printer, and then you can set up your camera on a tripod. You can have it look onto this test calibration pattern, and in the display you can calibrate it now. With the magnifying lens button, you can increase so you see closer where are you are focusing to. Um, and what's special also on this lens, because you have a left eye and a right eye view, is with the info button you can change between the view of the left and right. And so first focus on the left, make sure it's nice, it's clean, it's sharp. In some cases, like with this test pattern, you will actually see a moiré pattern at uh, the areas where it's the sharpest. Then change over to the right lens, make sure it's still sharp. If it's not, like if it's misaligned between left and right, there's a screw on the lens that you can manually change with a tool 
um, to realign this focus. But usually you might not need that in the beginning. Now let's talk about the HDR options. HDR is very important for VR 180 photography. The reason is because you have this huge field of view, you have your full 180 degrees to the sides, you have full top, bottom, and in all of these areas there's very likely something which is much brighter or much darker. So with HDR you can make much nicer pictures. So you have settings in the Canon EOS R5 where you can enable HDR. There's also different kind of styles. I just use the regular one. And um, it also allows you to change the option if intermediate files should be saved. So when it shoots three images, do you want to save these intermediate images and then also the HDR image or only the HDR image? To avoid confusion, I actually prefer just saving the final HDR image unless there's a good reason to do it otherwise. Also, it's very important to note that for this camera, with this lens and this combination, there's no image stabilization. The lens itself does not have image stabilization. While the camera has it, it is actually turned off in this lens setup. So when you shoot HDR out of your hand, it will most likely will go wrong. I tried it multiple times in outdoor and in bright settings and with different settings and everything, um, but it's very tricky. You get blurred images, you can see um, borders. So we really recommend if you want to shoot in HDR, do it on a tripod, make sure your tripod legs are not on it um, and go for it. Let's have a look at the images which we just shot. So here we can see the dual fish eye and as we mentioned earlier, the full sensor of the camera is not used in this setup. Therefore, we don't have the full 45 megapixels. The usable area later will be more down to 34 megapixels. What this also means, in my opinion, it only makes sense to shoot at the highest resolution with this camera, like the L image setting, but anything lower, it really doesn't make much sense. So this amount of megapixel also explains why Canon is currently only allowing this lens to be working on the EOS R5 and EOS R5C. Because if you look, for example, at the EOS R3, which is more expensive but has less megapixels, if you consider that not the full sensor size is used, you would roughly come to a final image around 18 megapixels for stereo VR. So that's exactly the resolution we had in the earlier cheaper consumer cameras. If you look at the other camera model from Canon, the EOS R6, it even has less megapixels than the R3. Um, and in that case, you could calculate that roughly you would get out 15 megapixels, so even less than the other consumer cameras. So right now it doesn't make sense to support these other cameras which have lower resolution. However, if in the future there will be a body which has even higher megapixels, it might be worthwhile that this lens works on it and maybe you get even better images, but we don't know. Now that we have our two images here in fisheye format, for most purposes we actually want to convert them into a stereo equirectangular format. And to do that we can use the Canon EOS VR utility tool. And the tool is free for downloading, you can convert your images for free. However, if you want to convert videos which are longer than two minutes, you need a paid subscription. And this paid subscription roughly costs 60 euros per year. And considering that we just paid 6,000 euros for this camera setup, it feels a little bit strange that we still have to pay additional money to get our videos converted, but that's how it is today. Now, when we look at this image with the stereoscopic equirectangular format, we can actually see that the neighboring lens is also in the images. So the left eye image has the right lens in it, the right eye image has the left lens in it. And if you think about it, because it is VR 180 and you really capture 180 degrees field of view, it's logical that it must be visible in it. However, um, the lenses on the Canon lens are pretty large and what we had in the consumer cameras were much smaller lenses. So this effect was not as bad in the consumer versions. However, of course, with larger lenses you can capture more light, so there's a drawback. But that basically means maybe your last two, three, four, five degrees that you get from the 180 degrees at the left side border and the right side border might not be very usable because it might confuse um, the VR user because when the VR user looks at this image, turns the head to the left, will actually see on one human eye only the other lens and that's confusing because not both eyes pick it up. Speaking about watching these images in virtual reality, if you're wondering with what tool can you best watch this and have a really good experience browsing through the various images you took, um, it's actually pretty hard right now to find the right tool. 
And so far we haven't talked about publicly yet, but this is the first time we actually do it. We at MRVR, we are developing a brand new software which allows you to watch immersive images in high quality with lots of nice features. And we're naming that product Immer Gallery. And we don't have a specific release date yet, but it's rather sooner than later. And if you're interested in Stereo VR 180 or 360 degree images, you definitely want to subscribe to our channels because there we will update you as soon as there are more details. Now let's have a look at how these images actually look inside HMDs. For this we use again our image gallery tool already. So now we're actually zooming through the lenses of the HMD to show you what you can really see when you wear this HMD. And the first image we have is a Stereo VR 180 image we took with the Lenovo Mirage camera. And when we switch over, we will actually see the Canon ESR5 image taken with the 5.2 millimeter lens. If you compare both, you will notice that with the Canon generated image, there is much more detail here. So that means with the current resolution of HMDs, you clearly benefit from having higher quality, higher resolution images on your HMD. Now for the final rating of the Canon 5.2 mm stereoscopic VR180 lens. So most important for us, the biggest pro is it gives you really high resolution images at high quality. And of course, because it is on a regular Canon body, you also can use all the standard features which you use usually for your photography. That means you're able to do HDR. It means you can tag your images with, with GPS if you're connected over your phone with Bluetooth or if you have this additional um, little GPS tracker up here. Also, it's a relatively easy setup compared to, let's say, specialized rigs where you have different cameras and they need to be synchronized and everything. This thing, you just purchase a body, you purchase a lens and you go out and it works. Um, there's no specific synchronization manually needed because all the two images will land on the same sensor. So you always have the same exposure time, the same color settings and so on, which is just great. But the cons are, well, number one is the price. With uh, 2,200 euros for the lens and around 4,000 euros for the body, it's not for consumers, unfortunately. It's really targeted to the professional market. So there will not be as many photographers with this lens as we would hope for. Um, the other con is because the lenses here are relatively large, which is of course great to get a lot of light in. It also means that the left lens sees a lot of the right lens and vice versa. So you lose a little bit of degrees field of view in your areas or you can leave them on, but it's confusing in VR. The other con is you only have a manual focus ring, which is a bit disappointing considering the price. And I really would like to have automatic focusing where I press on my touch screen and be done. And our latest con is uh, that for using this camera to export videos longer than two minutes that you need a paid subscription model at roughly 60 euros per year, while you already paid 6,000 euros for the full setup. We find this a little bit disappointing. So now what is our final conclusion? So we think the pros really outweigh the cons. So we give a five star rating here. It's great to have this setup available. It wasn't possible like this before. And we still hope that in the future there will be a consumer version at a much cheaper price so many more people can shoot in VR 180. So thank you for watching and please subscribe to our channels.